You're getting a sneak peek of the new Japanese giant salamander habitat at the Detroit Zoo's National Amphibian Conservation Center. This 1,850 square foot space has undergone extensive renovations to be transformed into a space for these aquatic amphibians that is twice the size of their previous habitat. Naturalistic elements resemble their native landscape in Japan, including a waterfall, a flowing stream, and several underwater caves. Japanese giant salamanders are the second largest salamander in the world. They can grow up to four feet long, up to 88 pounds, and live up to 50 years. But populations of these species are dwindling in the wild due to habitat degradation. They live and breed in rivers and forested areas, and alteration of river courses and dam construction are threatening these species. The Detroit Zoological Society is a leader in amphibian conservation efforts, and many programs are underway right here at the Detroit Zoo to reestablish and protect populations all over the world. Once these five salamanders acclimate to their new home, we will participate in a cooperative breeding program with a partner zoo in Japan, working to bolster the population and hopefully eventually return this species to the wild. Everything we learn about these animals, including how they adapt to their expansive new habitat and interact with social partners with whom they may potentially breed, helps us in our efforts to conserve them. One of the many scientific research projects we're working on through the Center for Zoo and Aquarium Animal Welfare and Ethics is with Japanese giant salamanders. These large, complex aquatic amphibians have always been a species of interest for us. The new habitat in the Detroit Zoo's National Amphibian Conservation Center provided a great opportunity for us to begin a hormone study using our endocrinology lab. The expansive new space not only allows for more physical options, but social choices as well. The salamanders are able to live in larger groups and potentially breed. So, we began measuring levels of a hormone cortisol in their skin sheds, both before and after the move to the new habitat. We are hoping to determine if the move results in a change in levels of stress hormones, or cortisol, found in these animals. This research has never been done before by any other institution with these animals, so it's really exciting for us. It's just one of many fascinating projects we have going on in the endocrinology lab. We're also studying hormones extracted from molted penguin feathers, from giraffe saliva, and from aardvark, grizzly bear, and rhino fecal samples. This lab gives us an additional measure of animal welfare. We're able to use innovative and non-invasive means to further our holistic approach to understanding how animals are faring. By using physiological data in conjunction with behavioral observations, we're able to further the science and create best practices that ensure that animals are thriving in the care of humans.